Hey everyone, what is going on? And welcome back to another video from the Man Talks NRL Supercoach. Uh, this video is going to look a little bit different to my previous videos. I think I'm just going to be doing a bit of squad tinkering. Uh, given Ryan Madison has had that concussion problem from last night's game against the Storm, uh, I've had some thoughts about what I want to do to my side for this round. Um, my original plan wasn't to actually make any trades this round. Uh, overall, I was pretty happy with my team. You know, there were some issues potentially with certain players like um, Dylan Brown I was thinking about or Lachlan Lamb. But at the end of the day, I decided I think I was going to hold trades for this round. Um, Dylan Brown still ended up doing okay. Um, so I was pretty happy I didn't do any change with him. But given that Ryan Madison had had that concussion and it looked pretty bad, I have been thinking about potentially making some changes at least in this round uh, just to kind of help set up for the next round as well. So I'll just kind of show my team on the live Supercoach page page and just uh, do a bit of a uh, tinkering. Uh, if you guys do like this video, and my, uh, please give it a thumbs up um, and do consider subscribing as I will continue to put out more videos uh, throughout the season. Hopefully a little bit more polished than this, but this is just a little bit of a quick idea that I had to do. So with Ryan Madison having that concussion, you know, it looked pretty bad. And obviously I'm no physio, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know how long his recovery is going to be, but it looked bad enough for me to think that he will at least miss the next week or two potentially. Um, and given that he has had some uh, concussion history, um, I imagine the Eels would want to be conservative with him uh, and not want to rush him back. You know, he's still only scored about 36, so that will still be in his rolling average. So even if he, say, does hypothetically play next week, I don't expect him, unless he goes, like, really, really large, I don't expect his price to go up that much or potentially just go... I, I would expect it to actually more go down. Um, and normally I'm not an advocate of wanting to trade these gun players out just after, you know, one or two rounds, but I think we have to kind of take into account some of the circumstances. I also recommended to not trade out Angus Crichton this week because he's going to come back into our sides immediately next week. But with this Ryan Madison news, I have been thinking about potentially doing a switch from Crichton to another player for this round and then using Madison as the placeholder to switch back to Crichton for next week. So in terms of what I've been thinking for this week, so I'll just quickly show how my team is looking at the moment. So no real changes uh, anywhere else in the team. Um, obviously Ryan Madison, Christian Welch, um, Dylan Brown and Ryan Pappenhausen are all locked given they've already played last night but I can still make changes to the rest of my side. So what I was thinking of was potentially trading out Crichton just for this week and this would probably be the only trade I'd make this round so I'd still only be making the one which I don't think is too bad given that 37 trades cost 25 rounds average out averages out to a little bit over one trade per round so I'm not really keen on using more than one this week. So I would be trading out Crichton and I haven't really thought through all the options so again this is going to be something I'll think about during the rest of the day but I have been thinking about some other good second or forward options that I could bring in for him say like Mitch Barnett who had a great game last round uh, and you know he's got the goal kicking duties for this um, until Caelan Ponga is coming back but with the money that Crichton unlocks obviously I'd want to make sure that I've kept at least 10-15k spare that I could then switch from say Madison to Crichton but given that I will probably be making two trades next week and wanting to change other parts of my team I don't think I want to be leaving just the 10-15k I think having a lot more in the bank will help so I haven't really fully thought through as to which kind of player I'd want to go for um, you know there's a lot of options in the second row forward and so I think you know someone I was keen on for this week in particular was Dave Fafida given that he's coming up against the Broncos so you know Dave Fafida potentially could be someone I bring into the side uh, for Crichton just for this week so let's see if I want to bring in Crichton there sorry not Crichton sorry if I want to bring Fafida that would leave me 113k in the bank um, and so easily I could do that Ryan Madison to Crichton switch next week um, and then they'll shave off about 10-15k there so I'll be left with about 100k in the bank to play with for the next uh, it will give me Dave Fafida, who's got a pretty good draw coming up. So he's someone who I would be happy to hold long term, which is something I would consider if there's, you know, if this is potentially a strategy you want to go for for this week as well. Bring in a player who you think is going to be a long term hold. So Dave Fafida is someone that I have thought about bringing in. I think I really like his matchup against the Broncos this week. Um, and, you know, with that 113k, you know, next week, if I wanted to say, you know, if Lachlan Lamb doesn't have another good game, I could maybe flip him to Hooker via Watson and I could easily bring in say, uh, someone like a Jaden Braley. Uh, that would be uh, possible. Um, I don't think I could actually stretch to read Marnie, but I think Braley, you know, is still going to be a very good option. So that trade is in the potential. So for next week, I could just do the Madison to Crichton and then Lachlan Lamb to Jaden Braley. Or, you know, if I don't feel like I want to carry one of these other cheap centers if they're not performing that well, say, for example, Jason Saab doesn't have another good game, you know, I could trade him. I've currently got Kurt Capel in my second or forward. That was just to cover for the Crichton uh, suspension for this round. I could, you know, I could trade Jason Saab. Actually, I could probably just show it live here. You know, I could go trade out Jason Saab, swap Kurt Capel, 
and you know that leaves me with 346k in the bank uh, and that with 346k at second row it's not a great amount but I think that would give me the option to get someone like uh, often Gawi I think let me just see how much he costs Joe often guy is 340k so I could afford often Gawi if I, he has another good game and he goes up in value um, or I could even go for Andrew Davey if we see him get 80 minutes um, I think he's priced at about 336k so there are some options that I could do with that leftover money I would still be getting Crichton in my team um, I'd be getting Fafida, so I'd be getting, you know, I'd be getting points this week um, and being able to lock in a gun player for the rest of my side. Um, and then with that leftover money, I can upgrade one of those cheap centers. I can upgrade Lock and Lamb. You know, there's options that I have. Uh, one scenario that I am actually kind of favoring at the moment is I really want Brian To'o. I think there are a lot of good second row forward options, and I think that does give the option to differentiate pretty easily in the second row with Vida, Nathan Brown, Mitchell Barnett, Luciano Le Lua, who I've touched on, Tarpany. You know, there's just a lot of good second row forward options i feel though that the center really is lacking this season obviously it's it can be difficult to, i think to stretch up to those really really expensive gun players like nofaluma zach lomax for, for example and i think unless one of those cheapy centers goes off and really starts being a good cash care option during the season i think it'll be hard to get an early gun center unless you already started with them in your side but i really like the look of toto uh you know he can potentially score on the same level as some of these other second rowers, um, and he has that potential to go big. You know, we saw last week he only scored 84 points. Well, I say only 84, but, you know, Crichton had a couple of opportunities where he didn't pass him the ball, and, you know, he almost scored a second try as well, Toto. So he easily could have, could have cracked the 100. They're going up against the Dogs this week. I do understand it's expected to rain a lot on the Saturday that they play each other. And, you know, that potentially could hamper the amount of points overall that the Panthers score. But I think I'm willing to kind of take maybe a slight hit onto his points this week and even next week when he's versing the Storm because I know long term he's going to be someone I want to get into my side. So what I am thinking of doing is doing that Crichton trade. I have got Ben Trojevic as like a bit of a dual center wing second row forward nuff. Uh, and this is the advantage of having these kind of, you know, nuff players with this dual flexibility. I'll then swap Trojevic just up to my second row. One downside of that is then it means Kurt Capel and Trojevic are both in my second row forward. Not ideal because then it doesn't help switching between the two. But to be honest, I'm fine to have Capel in my second row forward at the moment. He can be a bit of a reserve there for the time being. You know, I, I can deal with that situation a bit later. And then I'll that will give me the option to then uh, bring in a center wing player in my um, for that quite and trade out and so the guy I'm eyeing up is uh, Brian Toto obviously with this money I can afford guys like Brett Morris but I don't think they're at the moment still maybe the best value but I think Brian Toto at 520k is good value and I think he's probably I think he's at the moment he's got to break even in the uh, 30s and I could easily see him score above that again this week against the dogs so I think he'll go up in value from round uh, after his third game and so I think it will be more difficult to get him in at that point so I really want to kind of lock him in set and forget center wing I don't have to worry about him he also does play in that round 13 bye week so again someone I don't have to really consider too much in terms of how to change up my squad I know he's going to be a safe play so I can get Brian Toto into the team and that leaves me with 160k roughly uh, in the bank so plenty of money to work with for next week you know I think I'll be locking in that Ryan Madison to quite and trade next week take off the 10 to 15k so that'll leave me with about say 145k in the bank you know there's so much that i can do with that money i could go lock and lamb to Jaden Braley. uh don't think i uh and i could do that trade via flipping connor watson down to my 58 if i feel like it i can go from dylan brown to cody walker you know i've got that option as well or you know dylan brown to cam munster don't think i'd be doing that move given that I feel that Eels draw now that they've played the Storm does soften up a little bit for them. So I think he could do really well. You know, one of these cheap center wing players who I'm not too keen on, like Jace, say Jason Saab, for example, with that 160k, I can then swap back down Den uh, Ben Tavojevic or Kurt Capel and bring in like a Joe Fengawi, Andrew Davey priced player. You know, there's a lot of options that I can do with that money. So I think I'm pretty happy to make this trade for this week. It does mean doing an extra trade that I was planning for this round, but I think I'll be able to bank extra points. I'll be able to lock in a gun center wing player who I otherwise wouldn't have been able to get to probably for a while. Um, and given that, you know, I am banking on, you know, Madison being out for a few weeks and we just don't quite know of that yet. So it is a little bit of a risk, but I think I'm happy to take that risk. Um, and knowing that he's got that concussion history, I feel sometimes it's really hard to predict, you know, how a player can recover from that and, you know, 
how his minutes might get managed. For example, there's a lot of um, factors, I think, that go into those concussion kind of injuries in terms of when it means a player can come back to full playing. So I'm happy to make that trade, I think, for this round. You know, I did advise to hold Crichton, uh, and I still think if there's other, there's no other issues in your team, I still wouldn't recommend trading him out because it's never safe, I think, to book in some of these transfers, say, like if I say, oh, yeah, I'm going to do Ryan Madison to Crichton next week. But... If, in, if I knew that Madison was going to be out for a few weeks, uh, I would 100% be fully confident in this decision because I know that next week I would probably just trade Madison out anyway. It's just bringing forward this trade one week early um, and then being able to bank the points this week to hopefully just kind of maintain a good decent rank because I had a decent start to the season. So that's my trade thoughts for the moment. I think I'm leaning towards doing this move just doing the one trade this week and then I'll have a lot of options next week um, with that other trade once I do that Madison back to Crichton move. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this. Obviously, it's not so polished and edited um, as some of my other videos, but just wanted to get my thoughts out there today. I think this will be a decision that a lot of people might be thinking of. So just wanted to give my own opinion on that. But if you did like this video, would really appreciate a thumbs up um, and do please consider subscribing as I'll be continuing to put out more content through the 2021 Supercoach season. Until then, see you guys in the next video.